Hello and welcome to our self marriage conversations. I'm here today with Kim Perales and I'm so excited to be chatting with you about your self marriage, Kim, because we've been talking to a lot of folks that did these big events, which are wonderful in their own right. And your self marriage was so spontaneous, so intimate, and yet still so special to you. So I really appreciate you being up for this conversation. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Megan, for even like considering me. I think it's like amazing what you're doing. And, and I'm just curious to hear everybody else's stories. Like they sound so cool. Yeah. Well, let's start by your inspiration. What inspired you to marry yourself? Well, like you said, it was very spontaneous. It was in 2018 when my brother um, got married. He, we were in the court in New York and we were just waiting because it was a long, long line. And there was um, a sign that says the clerk sign, right? So I picked it up and I was like, you know, I thought about it in the moment, what would it be to marry yourself? Like, can you even do that? I mean, just thinking, right? I mean, obviously, obviously you can't do it like officially, but I was like, can people do that? Just say, hey, you know what? I want to marry myself for now. Um, not as regarding the the, the the need or the want to have a partner in the future, but just do it for yourself. So I picked it up and I was like, huh, like, you know what? Today I'm going to marry myself. Like, I'm going to promise myself to be respectful to my persona. I, I want to be selfless. I want to understand and just make the commitment to to just be a good person and better myself in any area that I can. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do that. So I asked, I don't know who I asked, I think my sister to take a picture of my head. Hey. So I took the picture and and I posted it on Instagram. And I was like, oh, uh, I made like a little joke because I'm like the funny person. I was like, oh, marriage is, it's not an easy, but you know, with hard work, with communication, with all these things, you'll make it work. And that's how I promised myself to be. And everybody's like, oh my God, ha ha ha, that's so cool. Yes. Da, da, da. And even people that are married, they were like, yes, they're so right. Da, 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 da. So that's how I have it. <laughs> I love it. So right there at the courthouse, you did it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was good. the courthouse. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. And- Tell us again, what, what commitments did you make to yourself that day? Well, um, the commitment that I made to myself was pretty much, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was always true to myself, honest. And if I didn't want to do something, I am not going to do it. Like always pursue, uh, for love, love, not just like in a person or you know another human being, but love for everything I do in life. Like it could be my career, it could be any passion project that I have and always put my hundred percent, right? And I think most of overall is like the honesty because even in relationships, like with another person, that's what I look, right? Like that's what I look for. So I feel like by me making that commitment and, and, and building myself to become a better person, a better human being, I could make better relationships too and like build my standards, right? Because sometimes when we don't love ourselves truly, we don't let other people or we let other people abuse our our souls, you know? So that's that's a commitment that I pretty much make to myself to always be true with myself, honest with me and with other people. It's wonderful because even though it was a this impromptu decision that you made, I imagine for a lot of people out there that are interested in self-marriage, they may not want a big self-marriage. They may not want to include anyone else. They may just want it to be an intimate experience between with themselves. And so yeah. even though you did end up including someone to snap a picture and things like that, I love that you're modeling that it can be something that is more simple that takes, I mean, how much time did that take? Probably not too long, right? No, it was literally like five minutes. Like it, it was just something that it was like, oh, I just is for me. It was more about the thought about like, yeah. oh, can people marry themselves? Like, can you actually do that? And it was not. And you know, a lot of people make fun of make like you fun of it. I don't know if you had any experience. People say, oh, you can't marry yourself. Like marriage is between two people and blah blah blah, right? But I feel like it doesn't need to be that way. And even even for me, like 
to when and if I get married with another person. I want it to be in, as intimate as possible because it's something that we make a commitment between the two of us, now with the rest of the people. And I do respect people who ever have like big ceremonies because they want to share the big moment. Like it's beautiful. Or for me, it's more about like, let's make this commitment with ourselves. And then later we can have a party for them to celebrate us. But but the, the main, the most important thing is the commitment to, that you do intimately. So, so yeah. Well put, well put. So would you ever, now that you've seen the world of self-marriage, would you ever want to do a big ceremony for yourself? Or do you feel really satisfied with that, that experience that you had? <laughs> That's such an interesting uh, question. Because when you pop out and me all about this, I started looking and I'm like, oh, wow, people actually do this. And here I am thinking, <laughs> oh, this is, I did as a joke and that's something that it was for myself. Right. And, and now that I see that people actually have ceremonies, I'm like, huh, that, this sounds like an interesting, something that I will, I would like to explore. It's not something mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh yeah, let me make this big, big party. But who knows? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it sounds, it sounds nice. It sounds, I know that people are, in my family are going to be like, you're weird, Kim, because you know, we're Latinos and Latinos have big parties and no <laughs> celebrations. But hey, if I do decide, I'm going to have to come. If not, it's fine. That's why I did it myself because I'm like, at least I know that I'm already married, you know, to myself. Like I already did my mini ceremony. If they want to come, great. So <laughs> I will explore it. <laughs> nice, nice. And of course, you didn't have a ring that moment because it was spontaneous. And mm -hmm. you got yourself a ring afterwards. So tell us a little bit about the symbology there for you. Yeah, so yeah, the moment obviously like, like I said, it was very spontaneous. So I wasn't even thinking about the ring because for me, the ring is also something that it, it's symbolic, but at the same time, it's something that is not necessary to make the commitment, right? Mm -hmm. So even with a partner, you know, not just for myself, like I don't think like the whole big diamond thing, it's never been my thing. Like I've never been attracted to that because it's just, it's something that people put out there in society. Like, oh, hey, you give a diamond, that means that you're engaged, but it's that's just a physical thing right so in the moment I think about the ring but then later on I was like oh you know what I I want to get a ring I mean I love rings as you can see I have like I have five here <laughs> and and so but I never had one in this finger so I was like you know what I'm gonna I want to get one and I always wanted that had a cross because for me you know I believe in Jesus and all that and like I said it's not that I'm married to him but it's the what Jesus symbolizes in my life it's it's um it's peace, it's, it's love, self-love, all that. So I wanted that symbolic thing on my ring. So I got, I rang from Etsy, <laughs> super cute. And I have it there, it's a cross. And uh, yeah, so that's that's me like, oh, this is my commitment to myself. And mm -hmm. people ask me like, oh, what do you have a ring there? Like that's for when you're, you know, proposed to. And I'm like, it's, it's okay. Like if it comes, it comes, but I, this is my ring for myself. And that's how I want it, so. Uh, can you hold it up? Can we see it? Well, I have like, well, I changed it right now because I was like playing. Oh. But this, 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 this is this one. Yeah. So this is the one. That oh, I was talking beautiful. About. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say to someone who's considering self-marriage? Well, it was just so much. I mean, well, first of all, I, I think I understand why you want to do it like because it's not something oh yeah let me just marry myself but actually be intentional about it and I think like write write it down right the things that you, that you want to commit you want to promise yourself and I think that's the most beautiful thing you can do it's like okay this is what I want to do because not only just for the moment to say hey I'm married already but it's it's a, it's a lifetime commitment it's a it's, it's a commitment to to better yourself to become the best version that you can be and always work on yourself like any other relationship you you promise yourself to work on it right so you're going to do the same thing with with you so yeah actually understanding why you want to do it and then just commit to it and and just have a the greatest relationship that you're going to have that is with you your relationship with yourself is a living breathing thing that you yeah. have to nurture just like a relationship with someone else i love that idea so true mm -hmm. yeah well, yeah um, I'm trying to think if there's any last thing that I would like to ask you, but this is this has been wonderful so far. Um, <laughs> is there any final question you'd like me to ask? Um, I don't know. <laughs> what other questions we could do? I guess um, 
I guess maybe this is a question for like other people too. It's like that I'm curious to find out <laughs> once you, you finish the book. It's like, what are the things you keep doing after your marriage? You know, like how do you maintain that relationship? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Because it's, it's just not a ceremony. It's not just like the moment. It's like, okay, what have you been doing since you have you have made that commitment? To nurture the relationship. Yeah. And, yeah. and so let me turn that question to you. What have you been doing to oh, nurture yeah. the relationship? <laughs> I'm here like, I'm here thinking I'm on my podcast and just asking you. <laughs> um, well, I think uh, well, I I love to learn. I love to work on myself. Like I, I think I pride myself in saying that I whenever I feel like I'm a little off or, or feeling a certain type of way or feeling negative, I'm like, okay, I want to find out why I'm doing that. Like it's either by seeking therapy or by taking classes or courses or talking to people like mentorships and, and whatnot. So I think my commitment to become the best version of myself has always been about educating myself, like mm -hmm. self-education and also going to professionals where I could be like, okay, I'm learning this and that. So I think that's been the big, thing and and just actually going for things that i'm passionate about uh, if i have an idea i'm like all right let's go for it let's try to build it and let's just let's just do it and mm -hmm. i think one of the biggest things that i've done that i've never done before is like seeking healing and find out finding out if i, if I have any traumas or anything like that and being um being uh compassionate being compassionate uh by I resting because I never did that before and just forgiving myself for not doing the things that I said I was going to do, but then I go and do it, you know? So I think that's one of the things that I, I'm trying to constantly, constantly nurture, like seeking healing, seeing a therapist and, and just finding out those, try to heal those wounds, you know, that we have from like childhood or whatever, you know, traumas that we have. So, so yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that I've been doing, trying to better myself. <laughs> Yeah, investing in yourself and investing not just money in yourself, but time and energy. It's so easy to send our energy and time and money outward rather than inward. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's yeah. really become a practice for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even even having a, a partner now, right? I mean, not care or anything like that, but I, I still have that commitment where I'm like, okay, we're two people that we share time and space and energy but at the same time we're two separate identities right like you need to nurture yourself do what makes you happy because i can't be the person to make you happy mm. uh, like all the time or at all you know because if you're not happy with yourself i'm not gonna be the person to be like hey are you okay how can i make you happy and then the same thing with me like i'm not looking for for him to be like oh make me happy like i know i have spent so much time alone that i know how to make myself feel better or good if i feel any type of way yeah yeah well thank you so much kim this has been wonderful <laughs> i appreciate you sharing your story with me and with the folks out there who are watching or listening and have a beautiful rest of your day yeah thank you so much megan <laughs>